Hi there everyone, tonight we watched Batman, the 1989 version, directed by Tim Burton, starring Michael Keaton. Connor, what happens in Batman? So, Batman takes place in Gotham, obviously, and basically Jack Napier is a crime man, he's a thug, who kills Bruce Wayne's parents. Uh, making him become the Batman. Flash forward to years later, and Jack Napier becomes the Joker, uh, and he starts causing havoc in Gotham by making killer beauty products, and, you know, doing criminal stuff. He creates his Joker gas and starts, you know, killing people. Meanwhile, Bruce Wayne meets Vicky Vale, who's a reporter that's trying to take pictures of Batman with her news reporter man she works with. And basically Joker runs amok throughout the city. Batman discovers that Joker killed his parents. And Batman and the Joker fight in a church. So Aiden, what did you think about Batman? Oh, it's been ages since I saw this movie. Um, I think I probably saw it maybe a decade ago. Uh, it's really enjoyable. I think it's only gotten better with age, truthfully. There's something so charming and refreshing about all the miniatures and matte paintings and all that. The soundtrack is still fantastic, as I'm sure many people know. The Batman theme is absolutely iconic, but there's, there's good music all throughout this thing. I'm going to echo a fairly common sentiment that uh, Michael Keaton... He's a little dorky for Batman, maybe? I don't know how common that sentiment is, I guess, but he seems a little, a little dweebish, like he should be teaching fifth grade math or something. I guess maybe that was kind of the idea, though. I don't know. Or maybe they thought He's he was cool back then. He's supposed to be like then. more unassuming, I feel like. Walking around with his perm and turtleneck. Right. Well, that was the 90s. That was pretty cool back in the day. <laughs> in the eight, late 80s, but yeah, 90s, basically. Jack Nicholson is really good. Uh, he's not like the craziest Joker. He actually only comes off like moderately crazy. He's kind of just like an asshole crime boss who's really ass hurt. I kind of like him. He's kind of flamboyant. He is flamboyant. He's queer coded. Hashtag. He's uh, definitely queer coded. But, uh, you know, he. He's got his catchphrases. I don't know. I don't know what they were going for with him. Well, I do. I think they were trying to make him just kind of weird, but hell, run around asking people if they've ever danced with the devil on the pale moonlight and never rub another man's rhubarb. And he's a little bit goofy and weird, but he's moderately threatening at the same time. Uh, most of the action holds up. There's some stuff that's a little. A Bat little iffy. Batman's but. a little clunky in his rubber suit. It was kind of hard to make a convincing looking Batman costume that wasn't. Yeah, I guess. You kind of either had to go for slightly clunk slightly clunky Batman or Adam yeah. West Spandex. <laughs> yeah. Did you know they used pills? This is off topic, but they gave Burt Ward and Adam West pills so their penises didn't show as much in the costume. Because apparently, like, they shot <laughs> the pilot, and, dongs and, and producers are like, is there any way we can make it so their dongs don't poke out as much? Why not just take so them So they down? use, like, dick shrinking pills? Also, well, how okay. awkward would it be to, like, you know, just get one of those random midday boners, you know, you got no control over it. You're sitting there between takes, all of a sudden Adam West got a hard on. It probably happened. They shot, like, 100 sure episodes. Sure did. Had to have happened at least once. Mm -hmm. Some hot intern or something. Right. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, that was off topic. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, l action's a little bit clunky, but it's it's forgivable. Um, a lot of the other stuff makes up for it. The production design is so good. All the sets and miniatures and right. Well, like what they did with like the the Batmobile doing like the hook shot one yeah one eight or ninety degree turn. That was kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of like the grappling hook stuff. So a lot of it does hold up, I think. Yeah. Um, Batman's pretty murdery, which is strange because of the way we see Batman now with his whole no-killing rule. Although, it kind of works. It's 
Like, it's kind of entertaining to see him just murk people. He just throws some dude off the church. Right. Kind of inadvertently kills Joker, too. Well, nah, I mean, I don't know what his plan was with that one, but he I killed. think his plan was to maybe try to dangle Joker, but that church was coming apart like fucking... We'll give him, coming apart. Give him a 50-50 <laughs> on the murder charge for that one, but right. that black guy he tossed off. He probably had a reasonable doubt if they tried to charge him. <laughs> And then he blew up some factory in his Batmobile and just nuked everyone inside. Right. Uh, the twist about Joker killing Batman's parents. I don't know how common that is in the comics, but... That isn't a thing in the comics until it's this. a little, little dopey. Uh, I think they kind of try to do something with it where it's like Batman created the Joker on accident, but the Joker created Batman. Right. So I get where they're coming from with it, but it still feels a little contrived that was a point i didn't really like as a kid but actually on this viewing it kind of grew on me like if you ignore the blatant parts of batman lore this kind of ignores i feel like a lot of it actually works pretty well because i mean part of it's like joe chill killed batman's parents in the comics but and that kind of is just like made him want to pursue crime in general but i think think for this movie it was kind of a cool idea to kind of just make it you know joker so they could kind of have that theme where it's like joker wants revenge on batman because he basically fucked him up yeah but then joker basically you know but then batman was fucked up by the joker yeah and it kind of adds to that like symbiotic relationship between batman and joker that i think has kind of been built up over the years yeah, actually, I it think... is a little thematic. My one question is, Batman is obsessed with fighting crime and obsessed with his parents' death, and in this time he's never taken upon himself to solve his own parents' murder for 40-odd years, and then yeah, it, it just kind of coincidentally got solved. Yeah, basically. Because Joker just ran around well, like an autist, screaming pale moonlight at people. Right. Like Batman's the world's greatest detective. He probably could have. You think like he, somebody else out. would have witnessed this <clears throat> and been like, "Yeah, this dude always says." Well, he saw the guy's face. I'd expect right. Batman of all people to comb through every That's person right. who's ever been arrested, especially because it seemed like he was to that day a pretty, uh, pretty <laughs> prolific fucking crime boss. Yeah. Or Crent. I don't really. It's kind of unexplained what he was before. He kind of just. I don't understand really how Joker just takes over all crime. Like the second he becomes Joker, he's like, now I'm gonna do this. He like it made him crazy, so he burned the guy, and that made everyone just be like, okay. But uh, you know, Bob the Henchman was the kinda thematic scary. thing kind of works. Um, Tim Burton's a good director. He makes it's it's a stylish movie. You know, at times it can be a little silly, but it's kind of got that Tim Burton otherworldly flair to it, which makes right. it. Makes it a lot more interesting to watch. I think it's definitely the most stylistic Batman. Where a lot of them nowadays is kind of just like... Like the Chris, Christopher Nolan ones are just like... Okay, we'll shoot Chicago. We'll put a, either a blue or an orange filter on it. And that's Gotham. Put Batman where here, in a like, fast tank. <laughs> everything was sets. I mean, most things were sets. Most things were... You know, there were tons of matte paintings. Miniatures. All sorts of shit they did to kind of make their own Gotham City and not just be like, okay. Yeah, when you see like I, the map paintings of Gotham in the background, they're all like, like they have this kind of weird like pyramid shape where it looks like the whole thing is built on a hill and everything just right. like builds up towards the middle and that looks really cool. Well, it's all really like gothic too. Yeah. Definitely that Tim Burton style. I mean, I, I do kind of understand to an extent. Like, I feel like how how they made Gotham in this kind of added kind of like a comic booky or fantasy type of element to it more so. Yeah, it's a little more fantastical. Because you almost feel like even though it is like somewhat grounded still in, in Earth, it also kind of feels like it's like some kind of like... Like, the city seems, like, almost out of, like, a fantasy setting to me. Yeah, it's kind of got... Of. Well, it's kind of got, like, that dreamlike feel that a lot of Tim Burton right, movies do. Right, it's true. Um, also, Billy D. Williams is in this for, like, 20 seconds. Right. He was kind of the featured cameo. 
<laughs> I, I'm guessing at some point they plan to put him in the second movie. Well, the pl- I think the plan was he was going to be... I think he might be in the second movie too, although it's been like a decade, so don't quote me for sure. But I know, I think the original plan was he was going to play Two-Face in the third one, <clears throat> or eventually, originally, but then eventually it kind of was decided on the third one. And then they're like, actually, let's make it a... Uh, God, who did it become? It was the fucking Tommy Lee. Tommy oh, Lee yep, yep, took yep. over as Two-Face that. instead, which was interesting. <laughs> there was a lot of interesting... <laughs> Interesting casting choices after this right. movie. Damn it, Billy D. Williams would have been a pretty interesting Two Face. I'm kind of curious to see how that would have went. But, you know, everyone got recasted for the fucking Joel Schumacher sequels, yeah. which we'll get to eventually. Anyway, what did you think of Batman '89? I thought it was really good. Like as a kid. I got a little autistic about all the uh, about all the lore that got messed up, but I feel like for the purposes of this film, I don't mind if Joker was the one who killed Batman's parents. I mean, in this movie, Joker's just kind of like the... I feel like it's also a cool kind of uh, dichotomy that uh, Bruce Wayne... I guess he's not like the everyday person. But I mean, like, okay, so Joker's he's like a pretty the, normal guy. Outside he of is, being a, rich. yeah. I mean, he's rich, but he he does actually seem a little more like normal and down to earth. Like he just seems like a normal dude in this movie compared to like the other ones, which Ben Affleck we barely see him as Bruce Wayne. He always just acts the same. But even Christian Bale acts very like sly and eccentric. Where, where this, where fucking fucking uh bruce wayne in this movie kind of just acts like a normal dude like you kind of forget he's rich half the time because he just walks around normally you know he's just a fucking normal dude mostly and then he's also batman but uh you know joker is a fairly like average criminal basically <laughs> and he becomes the joker due to the circumstances and batman bruce wayne's a form- fairly normal guy and becomes batman because of the, com- the circumstances And what I'm going for on this is, I kind of like the idea that Joker was kind of a nobody when he killed Bruce's parents, then became the Joker, ironically because of the Batman. So I think that's kind of an interesting turn. I mean, I don't mind it. It doesn't have to be like a (laughs) one-for-one adaption. Like we already previously talked about, I really like how the world is built up. That's really cool, the gothic world. Uh, Vicky Vale's, a, she's okay love interest, she actually does shit, which is nice. Like, they could have made her more generic, like, fucking Rachel and the... Like, I feel like Rachel does shit in those movies, but she's not, like, super involved with the plot until she dies. Oh, I really liked, um... I really liked Alfred in this movie, too. He felt a little more fatherly, because yeah. in, like, the Nolan movies, he's basically, like, some weird stoic mentor guy who yeah, gives motivational like the, speeches. he's the fucking Obi-Wan. And I think he appears for like 30 seconds in in Batman vs. Superman, but I don't really remember. That was Gary Oldman. He was supposed to be like tactical or something. I'm kind of interested to see yeah. Andy Serkis' take on the Batman. And on Alfred in the Batman. I wonder if they're going to put him in a CGI. But yeah, I like so to make him play old, soft, fatherly Alfred. Yeah, no, that's what I do like about this Alfred. This one's kind of more grounded. I think it's... The Alfred's more kind of inspired by, like, the 1966 Alfred. Yeah. They kind of tried to make Alfred a little more... They've ramped up his character from, like, generic butler a lot. Yeah. Since, uh... Since, like, the 60s Batman. Because Alfred was actually a pretty mild character. He didn't really show up in the comics until, like... Pretty much, the, like, the 1950s. And he was, like, an obese person originally. And then they kind of, like, changed him with the show and shit. Actually, I think they made him skinny after the serials. Whatever. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Whatever. I'm just... I'm going on a tangent. But, um... I I did... I think this movie, interestingly, seems very inspired by, like, the first year of Batman comics by, uh... Bob Kane and Bill Finger. And probably Jerry Robinson. Although the credits are kind of hard to tell. Mostly just Bill Finger and Jerry Robinson, honestly, probably, but whatever. Uh, It's very, like, Batman's solo, 
Yep. No, uh, the police kind of want to catch him. Nobody really knows what he looks like. He's kind of a legend. It's a little simpler. And he's kind of just a guy who beats up gangsters. And I feel like Joker reflects that a lot. Because as you said, this Joker is a lot more tame than like Heath Ledger or, of course, Jared Leto. <laughs> or even Joaquin Phoenix in ways. Yeah. But he's just kind of like a generic gangster who's a little bit unhinged. And happens to be the Joker baby. And literally in the early comics, that's pretty much what Joker was. He's just like, I want to become rich, so I'm going to fucking kill people and make them laugh. Become the grinning people because of my Joker gas. Turn fish into clowns and rob banks. Yeah. I think I think they kind of wanted to have that stylized vision for it. Where it, was kind of, it kind of almost feels like a timeless movie because... You yeah. don't see a lot yeah. of technology. Even the TVs are kind of old. Like, a lot of things are supposed to be like that. So I'm guessing Tim Burton... I, I'm pretty sure Bob Kane consulted on it. Bob Kane's like, this is my original vision for Batman. Which actually is probably pretty accurate, even though his original vision was Birdman. But, whatever. It was Bill Finger's original vision on Batman. Pretty much uh, put in uh, exactly. And it's kind of interesting to see that on film. Something we will definitely never see again, <laughs> because Batman's like the yeah. ultimate Mary Sue character in this, but Batman's kind of a fuck-up in this movie. He's not like super OP, like fucking Ben Affleck's Batman or something, where you can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Superman. Yeah, it doesn't really... <laughs> like, this is the Batman that would get absolutely stomped by fucking... I mean, he really doesn't do anything all that impressive. He has a hook shot, he carries around one singular Batarang. Right. And like... What, he almost gets killed by the black guy and then he throws him off a building. He beats up like four random criminals throughout the movie and blows up a couple others and then gets beat by the Joker and then all, and then accidentally kills him. Accidentally. Yeah. I mean, His feats aren't that impressive relatively. Right. I feel like a lot, like, like, uh, Batman vs. Superman I feel like is really, uh, <laughs> Inspired by, like, Frank Miller's interpretation. Botches it pretty hard, but it is. Like Dark Knight Returns and stuff? Yeah, Dark Knight Returns. That kind of idea. And I just find it very interesting. And, I mean, even, like, Batman 66 is definitely inspired by, like, the 50s and early 60s Batman pre-Adam mm -hmm. West. So it's kind of interesting that the 89 Batman is inspired by, like, the really early adventures. Which is funny because I've been reading those because I've been working on like a Batman Golden Age series. So if you read like Batman or Detective Comics 27 through like 34, this is probably about the most like accurate to the core Batman. I mean they do add elements of the modern lore. Like Batman didn't have a Batmobile or a Batcave. Commissioner Gordon played a much bigger role in those. But whatever. It, in it's way, interesting to see kind of like an early vision of Batman on screen, and that's kind of why I appreciate it. It kind of feels like a response to the Superman movies too, you know? Um, right. Where the, the Superman movies were really focused on all the kind of like feel-good classic stuff. Well, this even like, Batman 66 is in a similar vein. Yeah. Kind of like the the cheerier classic stuff the Superman movies were, and this is also the classic stuff, but it's like the darker, darker aspects of the classic stuff, you know what I'm saying? Right. I don't know if that makes a lot of sense, but... Right. That's no, kind of like it's, my it's, rough idea of it, kind of like... Right. Well, like, the 66 Batman and the Superman from the 70s, that's really based on the comic books from, like, that era... Where I think Tim Burton kind of fused his own vision with, like, the early vision of Batman. And I think, like, at that point, like, you gotta keep in mind when this movie came out, Batman was kind of in a similar boat to, like, Aquaman. Where he was just laughed at. I mean, it's, it's I guess, true. I mean... In multimedia and even in the comics, like, guess, nothing that like, serious had happened. The TV show probably kind of tanked his reputation, but also right. running around with Robin and fucking Ace the fucking Bat-Hound and... Fucking gorilla, the gorilla and shit. Bat, whatever the fuck. <laughs> fucking Chompy or whatever gorilla. the fuck. <laughs> that guy only appeared in one issue, but I love him. Chompy the Bat Gorilla or whatever the fuck his name is. Yeah, I mean, it really wasn't... I mean, it wasn't that long ago either that 
Batman started to have a more uh, reasonable reputation because it really wasn't until like the mid 70s with like Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams and I mean you you probably had recent works like The Dark Knight Returns um, you had like uh, Death in the Family oh, yeah. and a lot of stuff like that where Batman started to become darker so I feel like that was a big reason I feel like this was interesting in like kind of turning Batman's lore around in a lot of ways probably kind of saved the modern character Batman is the reason he's so popular today. Because you got to keep in mind probably a lot of kids who watched Batman in the 60s, 23 years later, were able to watch this and it was a more grown up version. Uh, yeah, you have certainly a lot of, quite the change from the Batman they saw as Right, kids. and then like kids from the 80s watched this and now they're main understanding of Batman is this and I feel like you know eventually like Joel Schumacher took a shit on all of that but <laughs> yeah he's like I want to go back to the 60s <laughs> right I mean honestly say what you will about Christopher Nolan's but Christopher Nolan kind of reeled it back in it's kind of amazing that after this movie Joel Schumacher was still able to make Batman Forever and Batman and Robin Warner Brothers executives just had no idea. They were like, you know what kids want? They don't want, like, a cool, dark Batman with, like, a good character. They want the fucking Adam West cartoon Batman. I fucking wonder if it... Cartoony-ass Batman, except mix in the fucking 90s and make it radical so Robin's on his, like, rocket scoot rollerblades and bullshit. I wonder if it almost comes from the popularity... The, the Schumacher films, I wonder if it almost comes from the popularity of the animated series. Not that the animated series is anything like the Schumacher films, but, like, no. the the perception from higher-ups that Batman is for children because of the popularity of the the animated right, series which and is stuff ironic like that. because the animated series pulled it's heavily far from... far darker. It's darker than this movie by a shit ton. Right. And it pulled <laughs> heavily from this movie, but ironically... Bruce Tim also pulled heavily from like early Batman, like origin 1930s Batman, yeah. Dark Knight Returns, that type of shit, Neil Adams. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of ironic that they're like, wow, this truly is made for children. And then like. And then they're like, okay, make it for children so we can sell toys right. and this and that. And then, you know. They didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, no, they definitely had no fucking idea what, what they had. They didn't know what to do with it. I mean, I'm sure this movie sold tons of toys, too, which reinforces right, that impression did. as well. Well, yeah. And then Batman Returns did even better than this movie. Hmm. And my understanding is originally they were talking about bringing Tim Burton back. And he's like, I kind of want to... I think... I don't remember the full story, but I know he kind of wanted to, like... They kind of wanted him to go lighter with it, and he's kind of like, no, that's not what I want to do. I do remember. So we quit. Similar to that. And then they, like, completely course, cor they, like, I say course correct, <laughs> incorrectly, course corrected <laughs> off a cliff by hiring Joel Schumacher. But, I mean, we'll get on to that eventually. I want to do the batman -a -thon. Although I am excited to see Joel Schumacher's take on Bane. And Bane was a pretty fresh character when Joel Schumacher did him. He was like the new Batman villain at the time. He first came out in the early 90s, right? Or was he it came out 90s? with, uh, well, Venom kind of like early established him, but like the concept of Bane, because Batman was taking steroids and became a drug addict, and then they kind of like expanded that concept and created Bane for Nightfall, hmm. uh, which was... Because there did no Nightfall. Around the time of Death of Superman, so probably like... 93, 94? 95, 96, maybe. Mm. I can look it up. I think 96, I want to say, but I'm probably totally wrong. Close enough. Yeah, 90s. Like, literally, like, right before the Joel... It might have even been after <laughs> Batman Forever. Because Batman yeah. and Robin was 98. Batman and Robin is a bad shit cast, dude. I know we're getting off topic again, but... That is one stupid fucking cast. I mean, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Jim Carrey, Uma Thurman. No, Jim Carrey was in Batman Forever. Oh, whatever. It's Arnold, the Schumacher films. Uma Thurman. The Schumacher I don't remember who together. played fucking Bane, but he was some fucking professional wrestler. George Clooney. Uh, Chris O'Donnell. I can't remember who played yeah. Batgirl. Uh, Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee. 
<laughs> everyone who was popular in the 90s. So, like, these are yeah. all people who... Uma Thurman out of... Right out of Pulp Fiction, fucking... Dude, if they made a Jim Batman Carrey 5, it probably would have been fucking Tom... Tom, <laughs> uh, fucking... Tom Cruise. Not Tom <laughs> Hanks. <laughs> Tom Hanks. Dude. Tom Hanks is the penguin. Tom Hanks <laughs> looks like... Kind of looks like Michael Keaton back in the 90s, so they probably could have switched him out. That would have been interesting. Batman weighs like 100 pounds. I mean, even in this one, I do like that Michael Keaton's kind of scrawny. This is before the days. This is the days where they're like, eh, the suit has the six packs. So that's what matters. Yeah. And nowadays, Marvel, like, juices up even, like, fucking... They're like... Chris T. Pratt. T.J. Miller's gonna be, like, a th an annoying side character in Deadpool, and they start amping him with steroids. Well, they hired Chris Pratt because he was the funny fat man in Parks and Rec, and then they're like, okay, time Well, to he got ripped jacked. for Zero Dark Thirty <laughs> first, and then he got even more ripped to play okay. Star-Lord. Zero Dark Thirty people were pumping him full of roids, too, so it doesn't matter. Right. Just a... That was Save a weird Marvel casting a choice. Bucks. Do you think he was ripped when he went in for Zero Dark Thirty? Like he got ripped for the audition for Zero Dark Thirty, or do you think he was fat? They hired him for Zero Dark Thirty. He probably did like a five week fucking personal trainer thing just to get in moderate shape, and then once he got in there, and they're like, oh, "Okay, you're the guy," then they just pumped him full of roids and finished the job. Right. Like that fucking Indian guy from Stuber, who's supposed to be in some fucking. Superhero thing now. Right, he's supposed to be in the Eternals. Oh, he's in the Eternals. They pumped God. that annoying fucking Pakistani full of roids, and now he's like got terrible roid body, where his like abs are all misshapen. Like you look at the picture, and even though it's highly airbrushed and Photoshop, he's got like three abs here and like three down here. Right, it looks like they did chemical experiments on him and fucking Frankenstein the body to him. Whatever. Anyways, we've been through about six million tangents. Aiden, would you recommend? Batman, 1989. Hell yeah, this is a good movie. Connor, would you recommend Batman, 1989? I would recommend it. It's a good movie. It's probably my favorite Batman movie. It's probably sacrilege that my favorite isn't The Dark Knight, just because, for some reason, people like The Dark Knight. How is The Dark Knight aged like shit and this movie pretty much is still good? <laughs> like, I tried to watch The Dark Knight like a year ago and I was like, nah. <laughs> The Dark Knight suffers from the same thing that all Nolan movies do, where it's like, he can make things look really nice, but he's terrible with dialogue and action. Right. Which makes the whole thing fall apart. The only thing that endeared people to it was Heath Ledger and Christian Heath Bale. Legend, basically. Even Two Christian Bale okay. doesn't do too good in the movies. I mean, he's fine, but... I mean, he certainly does better in The Dark Knight than Batman Begins, but... <laughs> He's really bad in Batman Begins. Right. And at least they got rid of Droopy Dog for the Dark Knight. Oh, Jake yeah. Gyllenhaal's sister, Droopy Dog. That's true. Maybe we'll do it, dude. Maybe we'll just review all the Batman movies. The Batman a song. We have to watch Batman vs. <laughs> Superman. Might as well.